Godo Tutorials is not sponsored by or affiliated with the Godo Game Engine. Welcome to the Designing for the Sexes episode. My name is Josie and I'll be your guide for this episode. I also have a website at godotutorials.com, so please feel free to check that out. In this episode I will be going over the following. Why game designers should care. What women like to play. Lastly, what men like to play. The number one reason that people should care about the differences between men and women is that they both, in general, have different interests, skills, and reasons for wanting to play games. As a game designer, your job is to both acknowledge that there are different reasons why people play games, and then to design for those differences to get the greatest number of players interested in playing your game and leaving your game feeling satisfied. Now a person's psyche is created by both biology and culture. This just means that the role of biology in a person's personal choice of video games is not zero. This also means that the role of culture in a person's personal choice of video games is not zero as well. In this episode I won't be going over what comes from where. Let's simply try to understand that elements of play that men and women enjoy come from both biology and culture, and as game designers we must understand these similarities and differences to build the best possible game that reaches as many people as we can. If that is your intention, whether this is story, gameplay, or even art, the decisions we make as game designers need to be meaningful, and looking into the differences between men and women is one way to help aid us in game design decisions. In the last episode I talked a little bit about those differences, mainly in the realm of sports and biology. In this episode we go over the generalities in those differences in terms of playing games. Another important reason to care about the differences between men and women is that games have now equalized in the number of men and women playing games. It depends on the country. But in places like Canada and the United States, the ratio of men and women playing games is 50-50. It's basically equal. Other countries are moving towards that ratio as well. Basically, by choosing to ignore the general wants and needs of men or women, you may very well possibly cut your game's purchasing potential in half. Let's start with women. In general, women are social by nature. They care more about the group rather than the individual. I remember once at an office party, a manager of mine, who is a woman named Jane, planned out all the activities. There were about 10 activities, and each activity was a competition with a prize. I remember very well that Jane had explained to me that the purpose of each activity was not to have people compete, but rather, to have everyone work together to reach a goal, and to have everyone communicate and talk to each other. The point was to have fun and create more meaningful relationships amongst the employees, not to simply compete and win the prizes, and the prizes were quite lucrative if I may say so myself. Since Jane wanted everyone to win a prize, some of the activities were competitions where a winner is determined by a judge. This meant the winner had to be picked by Jane, for example, who had the best gingerbread house. This was done so Jane could make sure everyone won and that no one would feel the emotion of losing. This is just one example. In this case, Jane cared about the emotional state of the entire group, rather than the individual. In my opinion that makes for a great quality in a leader. You could say that Jane was nurturing and taking care of our team as our leader. Regardless, let's go into what the general population of women looks for in games. There are nine things that women may enjoy more in games than men. They are emotions, nurturing, connection to reality, personal instructions, reading, dialogue, verbal, puzzles, visual landmarks, and social. Let's start with emotions. Women, on average, can retain stronger and more vivid memories of emotional events. Not only are women capable of retaining stronger and more vivid memories, but women are also able to recall memories more quickly as well. This may help to explain why women love games that touch on the emotional aspects. Whether that comes directly from the games themselves such as the art and story, or if it comes from the players themselves, such as multiplayer and massive open world games. Lastly, women enjoy both giving and receiving emotional experiences, whether this is through telling personal stories, or even listening to the stories of others. In a sense, women are more process-oriented, or rather, women prefer experiences that are physical, interpersonal, or environmental. Next on the list is nurturing. Women like to take care of others, sometimes at the expense of themselves. They love to help others both physically and mentally. In a sense, they enjoy healing others. This may help to explain why women are dominating in roles such as doctors, psychiatrists, and teachers. Next is connection to reality. Women, and especially girls, enjoy playing games that are strongly connected to the real world. This may help explain why girls are into dolls, tea parties, and playing house. Girls are more geared to playing fantasy games that reside closer to reality. One reason for this could be that the emotions and experiences women feel are more real because the fantasy is grounded closer to reality. Next up is personal instructions. Women enjoy learning from others and learning by example. They prefer being shown how something is done, 
and even the benefits for doing so, in comparison to learning through trial and error. This could be useful when building out the tutorial sections of your game. Next on the list is reading. On average, women are better at men in reading comprehension. On top of that, women are better at memorization and retrieving long-term memory information than men as well. This helps to explain why women do better in schooling than men, as schooling tends to be challenging in both aspects of reading and memorization. On top of that, reading allows women to immerse themselves in an emotional experience. Women on average read more fiction than men as a form of emotional support and to experience new things. Next on the list is dialogue and verbal communication. Women love communicating with others. On average, women devote more brain power to communication skills, so in a sense it's purely biology. If you are into biology, the protein that determines communication skills is a gene called FOXP2, and women on average produce more of the FOXP2 protein than men. Women tend to use more of a rapport style of communication, used to form relationships with others, and are more process-oriented than men. They enjoy asking questions and building relationships. In a sense, women talk with the purpose of gathering information, and the best information is from someone who is open on giving information. To get the most information out of someone, that individual needs to have trust in you and feel safe from judgment when communicating with you. Rapport building is also a common interrogation technique used with police in the United States. A criminal will talk more if they feel the cop has their best interest at heart. Spoiler alert, cops don't. Regardless, communication is both an art form and a puzzle. This leads to our next section which is verbal puzzles. Women are more inclined to enjoy verbal puzzles. This in part has to do with women leaning into being more process-oriented. Great examples of verbal puzzles are group escape rooms, where puzzles are solved by sharing information and communicating amongst team members. Next on the list is landmarks. Some studies have shown that women are more reliant on visual landmarks when navigating terrain. Without landmarks, men outperform women with directions. When both men and women are given landmarks and visual cues for direction, in addition to position and routing information, women and men will show similar performances. Therefore, women rely more on landmarks as a navigational strategy. Also keep in mind that women are better than men at noticing subtle differences. This can be differences in facial expressions and distinguishing colors, something to keep in mind. Last and not least are the social aspects. Women, on average, enjoy socializing. What I mean is that there are studies that show women are better at cooperating with strangers than men. Women are more inclined to cooperate in interactions with strangers and have a stronger ability to form relationships with strangers. This contrasts with men, who tend to make better and more meaningful decisions when cooperating when there are friends in the group. So, let's talk about the men. In general, men are more outwardly aggressive, more competitive, they have starker ranges in personalities and aggression than women. Where women tend to cluster towards the middle in aggression, men can have more extreme ranges. Regardless, let's talk about the nine things that men may enjoy more in games than women. They include directions, spatial puzzles, discovery, competition, trial by fire, mastery, fantastical identities, fantastical stories, and destruction. Let's start with directions. Men perform better at pointing to unseen locations in a known environment. They are capable of remaining oriented when heading towards a destination, perform well with navigational instructions, and even creating an internal map with nothing but descriptions. Take for example the book, Lord of the Flies. It's an amazing book, and throughout the book, the author creates a map of the island for its readers with nothing but descriptions. By the end of the book, men are easily capable of drawing out what the island looks like in Lord of the Flies. If you were to do a Google image search of all the Lord of the Flies maps, you'll see that the maps are different, but the locations of all the events in the book stay relatively the same in terms of their orientation and location. This leads us to our next topic which is called spatial puzzles. Due to men and their ability to handle direction and navigation, this lends men to having a preference to solving spatial puzzles, which explains why they enjoy video games since video games tend to be mostly spatial puzzles. Men at times prefer the challenges of spatial puzzles and in fact studies prove that men are significantly faster at solving mazes and directional puzzles. I want to add that there are no differences between men and women in terms of reading a map, retracing steps, or remembering landmarks. It's just that with limited information and description, men on average are faster at creating closer to reality guesstimates of the environment they are in, the positions of their destination, and their individual orientation in regards to the destination over time as the person gets closer to their destination. This leads us to our next point which is discovery. Discovery is unique because it touches on knowing the unknown. Whether that be the lore of a game, the map of an island, or just simply for the sake of collecting things, discovery touches on some things men enjoy. 
but it still revolves around the idea of spatial awareness and navigation. Men on average tend to be problem-solving oriented, and discovering new locations, information, and even items help with solving future problems. You'll notice many earlier games, which were geared towards men, usually had elements of discovery, Mario, Legend of Zelda, and even Jack and Daxter to name a few. Women enjoy discovery too, but again, they enjoy navigating with visual cues and landmarks rather than descriptive information. Next on the list is competition. Men enjoy competing with one another as a form of status, and even proof of mastery of skills. Everyone enjoys some form of competition, but men enjoy it more, and even sometimes to an extreme. Sometimes men enjoy winning just for the sake of winning, not to achieve a personal goal or to get more meaning out of winning. Sometimes, men just compete to prove they are better than others, sometimes out of spite or out of anger. Contrast this to women who have the same will and motivation to win, but it comes from a sense of purpose and fulfillment. Next on the list is trial by fire. Men, for some reason, don't enjoy asking for help as much as women. The primary reason for not asking for help is that men prefer to learn from their mistakes. On one hand it comes from a place of competition. In a sense, asking for help means they have lost and are seeking help from someone that is better than them. The other reason is that men like to tinker with hypothesis. Trial by fire is simply just another form of proving a hypothesis. You have a hypothesis, you test it out, if it's wrong you come up with a new hypothesis and test that new hypothesis. And if you are right, bravo. However, if you are wrong, rinse and repeat. Men prefer to learn by their own mistakes and come up with their own solutions to their problems. In a sense, men are more solution-oriented. This leads us to our next topic, which is mastery. Men enjoy mastering skills. This again is in conjunction to competition and status. Regardless, they enjoy mastering new skills because of the challenges that come with mastery. Men don't care what they are mastering. All men care about is the journey of the challenges that mastery comes with. This does not mean women don't enjoy mastering things, because of course they do, and I would argue they master things with a stronger purpose. But, women tend to master things only if there is a purpose and a reason behind it. Next on the list is fantastical identities. Real life is boring, men tend to want to escape from reality. This is both the reality of the world, and, the reality of who that man truly is. In real life, not all men are brave, not all men are rich, and not all men are relied upon. But in stories, movies, and games, men get to be the person they've always deeply desired to be. Men enjoy transforming and becoming someone else, sometimes as a form of education, and sometimes as a form of escape. This leads to fantastical stories. Stories are a form of escape and allow men to transform their identities. Stories can also bring out a lot of emotions as well. Stories bring out tension and conflict, which allows the main character that men play as to have a reason to transform into someone fantastical. The best stories for men tend to be fantastical stories with adventures, such as Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, and Game of Thrones. In a sense, a good story from a game allows men to enter a new fantastical identity. This is not to say that women don't enjoy fictional stories. On the contrary, women read more fiction than men on average, but the genres are different. Women lean towards books and fictional stories that are closer to reality. Women also enjoy stories that they can relate to and that help them emotionally. Regardless, men still enjoy fantastical settings and stories set in fantastical places with fantastical characters, where characters can do fantastical destruction. This now leads us to destruction. I'm not sure why, but boys, when playing games, enjoy knocking things down. You can see this in boys that build sandcastles. They spend a lot of time building up those sandcastles, all to knock them down, all for the purpose of rebuilding the sandcastle back up again, only to rinse and repeat this process. Video games allow men to act out in destructive ways as well. In a fantastical setting, men can destroy things in fantastical ways that cannot be replicated in the real world. Perhaps this is a form of status. To knock something down, you must be skillful. Regardless, the need to break something holds truer in men than it does in women. Now, games can create many experiences onto the player at once. This is great because it means we can build games that target both men and women. A game can be both competitive and social. Games can be both hard to master and grounded closer to reality. A game can allow for destruction and nurturing play styles. A game can be both fantastical and setting, and an emotional roller coaster experience with great life lessons. The sky's the limit when it comes to building games, and it's up to you, the game designer to consider how to build a game that reaches many people as possible. If that is something you want your game to do, homework time. It's a simple homework. Now that games are being played equally amongst women and men, I want you to look at the most popular game of 2020 and try to guesstimate a pattern. 
look and research the game among us. What are the possible reasons for its success? The goal is not to be right or wrong. Just see what kind of elements it has that favor what women and men may enjoy in games. Personally, I believe it's a great game for both men and women to play. Well, that's all I have for you in this episode. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for clicking the like and subscribe button. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have an amazing day.